My name is Jacqueline Jackie Fraser. My name is Linda Hepburn Malcolm. My name is Billy Moss. The reason I'm here is to share my journey with cancer. When I first discovered I had cancer, it was devastating. My journey with cancer started in 2009 when I had just stopped um, breastfeeding my son and he still had a habit of playing with my breast. Um, he felt something that was different. As I had fibrocystic breast, I thought maybe it, he felt something that was fibrocystic. I went to see a doctor in Nassau and they did some diagnostics and it turned out that I had breast cancer. My journey began in 2002 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer stage three. And at the time it was a roller coaster ride. Um, I had to have a mastectomy and then I had three, three rounds of chemo and then I had 13 rounds of chemo. And I was okay for a while until 2013 that I was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. So I'm back on the roller coaster. I was a stage two cancer uh, patient when it was discovered in me. I had no nodal, um, no nodal involvement, which means that my nodes were free of cancer, and there was no metastases to any other part of my body. And so because of that, I believe, because I was able to discover it at an early stage, I was able to beat the odds much better than my niece who discovered that she had cancer when she was at stage three going into stage four, and she didn't make it, and she was 33. Financially, it affected me greatly. We had in health insurance at the time. As a matter of fact, we had two health insurance at the time, and I was covered. However, in 2012, the breast cancer reoccurred after having a bilateral mastectomy, and um, it was at that time that we began to experience serious financial um, challenges. Having cancer kinds of wipe out your finances. Anybody who went through the ordeal will tell you it eats away like Pac-Man. It eats away all your finances. And should it be lower? I think it can be, but because of cer certain circumstances, they won't allow it to be. With can one maintains a healthy lifestyle with cancer, when one exercises, one has to exercise, it's important. One has to make good choices when, with their diet. The goal of the Susan G. Coleman Marathon race in the Bahamas is to raise awareness because what we have found is if you are able to find that you have an issue with cancer, at an early stage, your chances of survival are significantly improved. A lot of the food that we're eating now is processed. And if you choose to eat organic, sometimes you can't afford to eat healthy. So people have a tendency of reverting back to what they're used to or what they're comfortable with. And that means fast food and processed food. We have to be responsible and take responsibility for our own health. It has to begin in your mind. You have to get up and not give up, and you have to prepare yourself to fight. And then real life began. Um, some say that there are common ways to acquiring cancer. The society that we live in now, um, the area, the air that we breathe, um, we're in an industrial area. So because of the um, fumes that they let off, I believe, um, some of the cancer that we're inquiring now is because of that. Because I live in um, Hawksville, and so we're having challenges down there now with the um, fumes and the air we're breathing. You must be careful about what you put in your body, and your body speaks to you with regard to what you are eating. So you, you must remember that um, the, whatever you eat, whatever you do, whatever you breathe, it impacts your health. You know how you feel when you're riding behind one of those uh, vans with dirty exhausts. It impacts upon your health. So you must be careful what you eat. Cancer research efforts in the Bahamas are basically not very much as far as I'm aware. 
Right now, they're trying to, to develop or expand the registry because it's important to know the extent of cancer in the Bahamas, and so a registry needs to be created and updated and maintained. But the research that has been conducted regarding cancer in the Bahamas was conducted by a study that was funded by the Susan G. Komen organization. And it was done by a Dr. Hurley out of Jackson Memorial Hospital who found that there were a lot of patients coming from the Bahamas who presented with uh, breast cancer. Based on the study that she conducted, it was found that in the Bahamas we have the highest incidence of a particular gene, a cancer-causing gene, known as the Bra Bra BRCA1, BRCA2, BRCA gene. And because of this, persons in the Bahamas were presenting with cancer far sooner and at an earlier age than they were presenting with cancer elsewhere in the world. And we have found that the incidence of this BRCA1, BRCA2 gene in the Bahamas is primarily the responsibility of the high, high rate of cancer that is being experienced. And it is important to know this because we have to do our screening of our young ladies much earlier. The incidence of cancer also is not just in women, that out of every nine persons who are diagnosed with breast cancer in the Bahamas, one is male. First of all, you have to get up. Get up in your mind. It's not a death sentence. You can make it that, but it don't have to be that. The first thing you need to do is you have to tell yourself, I'm willing to fight. But if you're not a fighter, it'll take you out. But you have to fight, you have to show up, get up, and live your life. My advice to cancer patients is to listen to your body. You must understand what your body is saying to you. And you must always ensure that you have your regular checkups. Don't, don't be afraid to find out what is happening. Go to the doctors, even though many of them don't know how to deal with cancer and there's no cure that they can find for it, at least they can give you some guidance. Listen to your body and draw closer to your God because he is the ultimate physician. And this journey has certainly brought me closer to, in terms of my spiritual growth, that has been a strength when there's been nothing else. You know that God is able to heal and to take you through whatever you are going through. For he who has health has hope, and for he who has hope has everything. These three ladies have shown us to keep on going and not to lose hope.